This is your relic biker, relic biker, Dale Little. Um, and uh, got my video started just a little bit late. Um, I meant to start it before. I just, I just finished crossing over the, the highway to this spot where normally there are a few dogs. Um, <clears throat> occasionally give me a little bit of a problem. Uh, most of the time, not too much, just barking. Um, however, today was a surprise, which... Um, <clears throat> I sure would have had to, some excitement to the video. Uh, it was it had me excited a little bit. Um, there was a large dog, um, and of course we're all familiar with the saying. I think "Let sleeping dogs lie." Well, there was a large black sheep dog laying right beside my bike path just after I crossed over, and um, I uh, just caught him out of the corner of my eye I'm, I'm watching um the monitor on my um uh, new electric bicycle um seeing which gear i had it in and all that which power setting and so i caught a glimpse just out of the corner of my eye of something big and black laying there i said i know that's a big sheep dog and it's right beside me almost and Sure enough, it woke up just as I um, not quite got past, and he jumped up and came after me. Um, I, I kept an eye on him and uh, looked him in the eye as much as I could. I can't take my eye off the road too much or the, the path. I cannot, uh, at this age, <laughs> 74 years old, um, keep a good straight path while I'm looking away. And so um, I had to keep looking back, but he knew I was looking at him uh, i was looking at him they say don't look a dog in the eye well you know sometimes that may be good advice other times you need to look the dog in the eye and let him know who's boss um he's already challenged you and that's the idea that when you look a dog in the eye that's a challenge to him well if he's already come after you, he's already cha made the challenge so uh, i'm going to look him in the eye and let him know i'll take that challenge and you better back off and so uh, he was standing about, um, oh, maybe four feet, three feet at least, three or four feet um, off my right side, just off uh, right and just barely behind my leg. And I'm, I'm keeping watching him, and I'm thinking, well, you know, as long as you don't come any closer than that, as long as you don't make that lunge, you can bark all you want to and, and <laughs> run alongside of me all you want to to a point. And um, I said... Uh, wasn't going to really stop and, and make it a, a big issue but then all of a sudden there's about four or five other dogs start coming out of the woodwork so to speak uh, a couple of them are smaller dogs a couple uh, at least one of the others was large um, <clears throat> but that's when I hit the brakes and uh, just skidded to a stop very quickly uh, and as soon as I did that by the time I got off my bike they'd all started scattering except for the one small one uh, which may catch a little bit on the video there. I'm not sure. A little black one. But um, anyway, it's not incidental after that. Uh, they kind of left things alone. Uh, and uh, I kind of let them know who was boss and went on my way. And, uh, but we're about to you know, see some more exciting things here on this video. Uh, uh, on a trip to Sadu, or Sadu, um, and I've been here once before, and I don't think I've posted that video yet. I'll go back and get a little bit of it later um, if I don't decide to incorporate a little bit of it into this one. Um, a couple of uh, things that uh, I'll point out. One is that um, I saw the fastest uh, speed I've been able to get up to um, on a bicycle since I've been here, since I've had a bicycle. Uh, I got up to 42, I think, at one point. Well, I finally got up to 45 um, on this ride, going down the long hill um, into Sadu. Um, I had, um, I think I clocked it. Uh, I hope I got some video of it at 44, but then I moved my camera up, and I, I come to another spot where there's no traffic and so I, I begin to pedal some and, and this without any power no no electric power at all and no assist power so 
Uh, just after that, I was able to hit 45 uh, kilometers per hour uh, going through there. And so um, this is pretty much a downhill stretch. Uh, to Sadu, or Sadu, I, th- I think is the real pron- correct pronunciation. I'm, I pronounced it for so long, uh, Sadu. Uh, as usual, it's uh, English and uh, other languages. The s- emphasis is uh, usually on different part of the word than... Uh, in each language so I often pick the English um, just without thinking Uh, you know that's probably the correct pronunciation but uh, later find out no the emphasis is on a different part of the word so sadhu or sadhu Um, I think it's sadhu sadhu s-a-d-u and uh, so anyway hope you enjoyed the video uh and we've got a little more excitement coming up uh, here shortly. Living below in this old sinful world Hardly a comfort to a poor Driving along to face temptations call Where could I go but to the Where could I go? Where could I go? Seeking a refuge for my soul, needing a friend to help me in the end. Where could I go but to the Lord? Neighbors are fun. I love them everyone. We get along in sweet accord. Stopped here for just a few minutes and uh, look back where it come from and uh, where it took some videos for back there. And look around and uh, there's a dog up ahead barking on the left, the big white dog. And he's not restrained, but I got by okay. He didn't come after me. Where could I go? Needing a refuge for my 
Okay, I'm getting ready to take a right here up this uh, road to the right, of course. <laughs> and uh, just slight curve there and it goes up it i uh, went up at the first trip down and i got some video this video is a little bit better i uh, proceeded a little closer to the edge to get a good shot which i had hoped to uh, get a good overview of uh, the city uh, from this perspective okay i've i think i picked out a pretty appropriate uh, song uh, go along with this little view that you'll see here shortly God walks the dark hills weighs the highways he walks on the billows of life's troubled sea he walks in the cold, dark night, the shadows of midnight. God walks the dark hills just to guide you and me. God walks the dark hills just to guide my footsteps. He walks everywhere. By night and by day He walks in the silence On down the highway God walks the dark hills Just show me the way God walks in the storm The rain or the sunshine He walks on the billows or through glimmering light Helps me walk up the mountains so high Cross rivers through valleys God walks the dark hills Cause He loves you and me God walks the dark hills Just to guide my footsteps he walks everywhere by night and by day. He walks in the silence on down the highway. God walks the dark hills, just show me the way. Okay, one of the reasons I wanted to make this trip to um, Sadhu, um, besides the <clears throat> seeing the village and the architecture and streets, things like that, was uh, to the left there's a road that goes down. 
kind of out, looks like more of a country road. And I wanted to take a trip down there. I'd seen Kathy and I a couple of years ago come across a herd of uh, water buffalo. But as I make my turn, that is a large Caucasian, Caucasian sheepdog laying there asleep. And uh, again, uh, let sleeping dogs lie, I decided to turn around and maybe make that trek some other time. <laughs> There was no, uh, he was well inside of where a gate should have been, but they, evidently it's under construction, so he was, there was no gate. He had open access to the highway there, so I decided best to back off and uh, go again. So, uh, well, maybe one other day we'll see the buffalo um, and come and maybe find the herd and just maybe get a little video of them. This is a very unusual traffic circle uh, coming into Cebu here, uh, excuse me, uh, Sadu. And uh, it's really not a, a circle, it's a, more of a triangle, uh, but it serves the purpose of a, uh, basically a traffic circle. And we'll encounter this again in just a few minutes. I took some video and some of the old cobblestone streets, because of course this is a much larger place than Chesnadilla. Uh, much more to cover here so I didn't get a whole lot of video I started late in the day uh, maybe one day I can go back and, and cover some more but uh, just want to show a few things and uh, I'll incorporate this later in another video to show you more of the streets but I wanted to get back to uh, kind of the subject matter at hand and uh, <laughs> that was um, as I was looking through here I decided uh, you know to give up my search head back to the house um, and so uh, that's what we'll do here friend if you haven't uh, found Jesus Christ if you don't have him in your heart then there's a much greater search that needs to be going on and uh, for you super spiritual Christians out there um, won't you quit contradicting what God says Jeremiah 29 13 you will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart don't tell me that man never seeks after God. Now, the Bible does say that also, but its reference is that he doesn't do it until God first prompts his heart, that God comes first searching for him. But that doesn't mean that man never searches for God. He will after God begins to prick his heart and uh, draw him to himself. I walk by the tomb of Buddha Looked inside and saw his bones Traveled on to see Muhammad Still wrapped up in his great clothes Then I journeyed to the garden Where old Joseph left him lay But the precious lamb, God's only begun Like I know him, you would know that he's alive. If you felt him, like I feel him, resurrection deep inside, you know that he is living dead. That's all I have time for on that one, but seek after him if he's drawing you. If he's not, you're not going to seek after him anyway. In the traffic circle and head back uh, to Chesnadilla, and I'm looking straight ahead, uh, not looking left or right, and um, somewhere I um, just get by and I hear this awful sound. Um, needless to say, I, I turned back to see what it was, and here is <laughs> back 
to my place to water buffalo. Uh, first I'd seen the one, that's all I'd seen. So I'm going back now to um, kind of a twofold purpose, hoping I, I'd pass those youth back there, hoping nobody gets hurt. I um, turned out this water buffalo had just uh, run wild <clears throat> from the rest of the herd. And actually there was two of them. Um, and they're standing outside uh, that building right in front of us there, um, like they're wanting in the door. Uh, it's a nicely painted building. Um, there they are, you can see them. And um, <clears throat> they, um, nicely painted building, nicely painted door there. Just, you know, looks like a place of business. And, uh, uh, they were looking like they were wanting somebody to let them in, and I'm wondering if they're going to bust in in a minute. Um, but these are powerful animals. They're very dangerous. Uh, people get killed every year. There's people that are severely injured or killed from buffalo attack, water buffalo. Now, the Cape buffalo, we hear a lot about them. They're uh, the more uh, uh, dangerous because of the temperament. Uh, these, But there again, you, I hear so much and I've read so much, and I see it's about the temperament being so gentle on these water buffalo, but that's not always the case. Um, like I say, there are people there who were injured or even killed. Uh, and last year, there were two, um, <clears throat> a son and his father. Uh, his father had uh, had a heart attack and uh, decided to take life a little leisure and decided to get in, and this was in Wales, uh, they decided to get some water buffalo and get into the business of uh, raising water buffalo. Um, and went well until one kind of went wild on them one day and uh, ended up killing the, both of them, the father and the son. And uh, so they're very dangerous, the big creatures. They can be way up to, to over a ton. Um, so I'm not sure what he was saying to me there, uh, but <clears throat> That's kind of like the same argument I've had with some people on one internet site and others, where they talk about uh, the venom of a copperhead compared to the venom of a, um, like a cottonmouth or a rattlesnake or something. Well, uh, sure, a, um, the venom of a uh, copperhead is less than those others mentioned, but when they talk about it, they almost sound like the experts, so-called, almost sound like the um, copperhead is harmless compared to the other two. Uh, that's a bad mistake to make because copperheads can be very dangerous. And, of course, people, you know, see this, they'll differ with me on this one also. But I know from firsthand experience, not firsthand, but secondhand, uh, people personally that I know that have been bitten by copperheads that very serious condition and and some were life-threatening um, sometimes copperheads give a dry bite and there's no venom injected that happens on occasions um, and then some people are more sensitive to the venom sometimes uh, than uh, for different reasons and you've got um, um, different factors also that I've learned recently in studying some of this that Copperhead venom differs in strength and um, how serious it is from different parts of the country. Um, some areas of the country, the venom is much more dangerous. So, you know, that may be some of the reason for the argument as I uh, come on up here and I, I'm headed back out now. Um, somebody open the door up and let those two <coughs> um, water buffalo in. And so now I've already passed a horse and I'm leading the horse across the road. Here comes the, uh, the water buffalo. Now here's a cow. Uh, so I kind of give him some birth to, just not to spook the cow or anything. Of course, I'm sure they're used to traffic. <coughs> and, um, boy, here's where the e-bike comes in handy. <laughs> I engaged the uh, power to get me started off on this hill. Otherwise, I'd have had a struggle. I'd have probably had to push it up the hill. And... Um, so as I turn, what do I see? Oh, more water buffalo. <laughs> they are coming at a, a, a... And here's what people do. I, I just don't understand. They, 
uh, one of them might be get surprised one day if one of them decides to charge the car, but uh, these are fairly gentle, but you can't always be positive uh, of the reaction. And uh, here's the farmer that's uh, bringing them on down. And uh, I think these three here, the one right in the middle, says something to me. Yeah, give me a look there. <laughs> and I, 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 you know, it may be one of those other uh, prophets prophesying over me. I've had a couple of those lately. Um, <laughs> and uh, so far, uh, what they prophesied did not uh, come true. Uh, as a matter of fact, it's always ready past that if they were real prophets, that what they said would have already come true. Just a word of, I don't want to get off on that subject too much. I, I'm doing a series on those, on prophecy right now on, on this channel. So you look some of my teaching up on that. We're studying Old Testament prophets and getting ready to go before too long into um, Revelation. Uh, but right now we'll uh, have, still in the Old Testament. We're in Zechariah and then we sidetrack to uh, um, Habakkuk because I felt the need to do that. I need to get a message out there that is valuable to us in this time. But anyway, um, yeah, one of the key things that I started to say is that you watch for in some of the cliches uh, that you hear in, in prophets, and, and they are they are under peer pressure too. If one major name prophet prophesies this, then others feel like they need to prophesy the same thing. Uh, they're not true prophets. I'm not saying there are none, but they're not true prophets. Most of the prophets you have today are people that, that cry out against sin. They preach the Bible, and that's what I do, use the Old Testament. Um, I mean, I don't use it. God gives it to me, but that's what I preach from most of the time, uh, or at least much of the time, and this is what we've been doing lately. But... Um, God gives a message, and you know it's calling people to repentance. It's calling out sin, um, and that's calling people to repentance and things like that. That's pretty much a what is described as New Testament type prophet. Um, and so, anyway, whatever your belief is on that, there is a lot of pressure to m conform. And so most of the conformity is wrong. Most conformity is, you know, wealth and health and all that stuff. And uh, one of the cliches that I've mentioned to start about, what you recognize right away if it's, whether it's true or false most of the time. But um, I've been noticing that uh, many of them want to use this opening remark uh, or an ending remark, I might say. After they give you the prophecy, it starts, it's starting now. It starts now, and so when you hear that, you know that's just a cliche that they feel like gives more power to their uh, prophecy. That's all it is. And so, uh, like I say, I've had a couple of those, couple of uh, prophecies lately spoken over me, um, and so maybe that's what that was. <laughs> I was getting from the water buffalo there, but anyway, uh, here I am on the way back uh, up to uh, Chestnut Dea. I think I'm going to incorporate just a little bit of video here and end up on this. Okay, this is actually uh, footage from my first trip out to Sudu, earlier trip, and I found myself uh, <coughs> coming in behind this horse and wagon uh, on this uphill pole. He's, he's laid down pretty good, I think. Um, not extremely so, but he's got a fair load on there, it looks like, and so um, I'm making just slow progress. Yeah, you know, I wasn't really trying to um, <clears throat> overtake him. Uh, so willing to follow along just a, a pace behind him. I was wanting to conserve uh, my um, battery power. I wasn't sure, you know, how much it's going to take to get back up all these hills, back to uh, uh, the summit before heading down to Cessandia. Um, but uh, I get a chance here in just a few minutes, and we'll follow him through, and I'll uh, find a spot to pass and uh, finally get my way around him uh, in the, the horse and the wagon. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I think this a couple of little small supermarkets in, in Chesnadilla. One is Profi and one is Penny Market. 
And uh, I think Profi must get all their legs or their eggs delivered uh, by wagon like this because you have to look through every carton to see how many broken eggs are in each carton before you get them. Um, almost every carton you open has got broken eggs. I don't know. Either, either they transport them in these wagons um, to get their eggs or they use uh, baggage handlers from the airlines, uh, maybe a part-time job that do uh, handle their eggs. I don't know, but one or the other, they're always broken. Uh, uh, whereas um, at Penny Market, uh, have much better shirts, even though you find a few broken ones once in a while. So here I'm going around, we're going into video. And remember, Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. He never changes. He's not changed now, and he'll never change in the future. But he's coming back soon, I think. And um, so we uh, look for him. And uh, so I make one request of you to share this video and to like it. Um, well, that's two things. Most important, I guess, of that is that you subscribe to my channel. You can all be aware of when I put out new videos. I uh, don't do as many of these biking videos as I used to, but it, it's, they're so time consuming. And um, uh, but I do keep them going. And so uh, if you'll subscribe, you'll be notified when I get new videos put out, whether it's uh, the biking videos or my uh, teaching videos. And so, again, it's call myself the relic biker at 74 years old, um, Dale Little, uh, here in Chesna Dia almost, uh, right now in Sadu, but we're headed toward Chesna Dia, uh, Romania, uh, where we're doing mission work, and got a couple of churches started, and we're working on those uh, uh, to grow those.